Hysteroscopic adhesiolysis is a procedure in which the intrauterine adhesions are removed by hysteroscopy. The contraindications of hysteroscopic adhesiolysis include infection, pregnancy, bleeding, malignancy, cervical stenosis, cardiopulmonary disorder, type 2 submucosal fibrides. The complications of this procedure include uterine perforation, hemorrhage, infection or endometritis, cervical incompetency or trauma, bladder injury, gas embolism, fluid overload, and infertility. The uterine distending media is used to allow the global view of the endometrial cavity in this process. Before we explain the whole procedure of hysteroscopic adhesiolysis, it's very important to explain the pros and cons of this procedure and take an informed consent. This procedure is performed under proper anesthesia, gowning and gloving, good light, lithotomy position and by draping the patient in a sterile manner. First insert the hysteroscope, then the cavity is distended. We do inspection of the tubal ostia. The hysteroscope is equipped with a light sources and camera uh, that allows the surgeon to visualize the uterine cavity on a monitor. So in hysteroscopic adhesiolysis, specialized instruments such as scissors, graspers or laser devices are used to remove the adhesions under direct visualization. Scar tissue is very carefully removed during this procedure and this procedure aims to meticulously remove the um, adhesions, restoring the normal anatomy and functionality of the uterus. Now what are intrauterine adhesions? These are in fact the bands of fibrous tissue that form in the endometrial cavity often in response to a uterine procedure. The basic underlying pathology is trauma to the basal layer of the uterus and its failure to regenerate. The causative factors include first of all trauma as a result of excessive curettage at the time of the DNC and the previous surgery like cesarean section, polypactomy or myomectomy. The second cause is that of the infection which may be genital tuberculosis or schistosomiasis. The presenting symptoms include amenorrhea and pain due to trapped blood, retrograde menstruation, recurrent miscarriages and infertility. The diagnostic modalities include hysteroscopy which is a gold standard, sonohysterography, hysterosalpicography and MRI. In order to prevent the adhesions formation, we need to avoid the intrauterine instrumentation means preferably use the medical method like mifeprostone for the termination of pregnancy. Another step is early detection of miscarriage and immediate evacuation followed by fetal demise. Now, hysteroscopic guided adhesiolysis is the treatment of choice which we have discussed and it is done in conjunction with laparoscopy with or without conjunction with a laparoscopy as a protective measure against the uterine perforation. Now, for the prevention from recurrence, we use the mechanical barriers like Foley's catheter, saline, filled, balloon uterine stand and the gel barriers like high yellow balloon. Antibiotic prophylaxis is given after this procedure and sequential use of HRT stimulate endometrial growth and prevent the opposing wall from fusing together. Now what are the possible complications of endometrial adhesions? If it is left untreated, the extensive obliteration of the uterine cavity and fallopian tube opening result in several problems like problems in menstruation and infertility. The other complications include endometriosis and hematoma formation. It can also result in repeated miscarriages. If these patients with uterine adhesions get pregnant, there are risks of morbidly adherent placenta like placenta accreta, uterine rupture, second trimester loss due to cervical insufficiency or premature delivery. Endometrial ablation is another technique of dealing with endometrial adhesions. It refers to all the techniques which permanently destroy the functional layer of endometrium and up to 5 mm of myometrium to reduce the heavy menstrual bleeding and to deal with the problem of intrauterine adhesions. The main prerequisite of endometrial ablation is that the uterus size should be up to 10 weeks, no fertility should be required by the patient and the best candidate is the one in which a woman is in pre or perimenopausal age who suffer from heavy periods.
So thank you so much. That was all about hysteroscopic adhesiolysis and the management of endometrial adherence. Thank you so much. Subscribe on Ops and Gyne. Allah Hafiz.